If you will come to order, our special town meeting should begin at the appointed hour. I call the Mr. Moderator for the evening. And as tradition, we will salute the flag. Please join me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. This is a, 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 a meeting in which we won't be doing any voting, I hope. But it's just for comments. And usually when we, uh, I start out by asking if any of you are not residents of, Vermont, of uh, Berlin, all right, so in, in, first of all, does anybody have any objection if a non-resident speaks at this meeting? Anybody? No? All right, no. that's good. Um, the question that is to be voted on in uh, the November meeting is, shall the town of Berlin form a municipal fire department and acquire the assets and liabilities of the Berlin Volunteer Fire Department, Inc., into the municipality? And uh, who would like, I suppose it would only be fair for those that are uh, behind this question might want to talk and explain a little bit about it. Joe? Sure. So Joe Staub, Chief of the Berlin Fire Department. Um, over the course of, of the years, we, we have seen a dramatic drop in uh, the number of volunteers. Um, but we have also seen an increase of the amount of work that goes into operating the fire department. Um, so with, with that, we are, we are utilizing our responders as also administrative personnel. And that has led to, in the past, a burnout, you know, with the tremendous amount of work that goes into um, let's say accounting. Um, probably about six years ago, we did outsource our accounting, but that comes with a cost, and, and that cost is, is also handed off to you as, as town residents and taxes. Um, so I believe this question <clears throat> is nothing more than should the fire department become part of municipality and in the hopes of the municipality taking on some of those administrative tasks to alleviate our responders. Is it clear that uh, a, a majority vote on this question would not create a merger? It, is, is the vote of the electorate going to accomplish the, mer the merger of the fire department and the town? That is the intent. So there won't be another vote? No. Correct. All right. Questions? Comments? Yeah, just along that, um, are, do you guys use the town attorney for this transition? Uh, because obviously it's a private corporation, always has been a private corporation. Assets belong to the corporation. I know there are some statutes uh, that deal with such things. I should a, a corporate fire department that's been funded by a town uh, dissolve? What happens and how is that handled? But I'm hoping there's some clear lines developed in that. And I'm Al Lewis, by the way, uh, former chief. I spent almost 25 years with, with the fire department. Uh, Ten years as uh, president of the corporation. Uh, I vote for corner station. I guess uh, with a lot of help from the from the team, uh, and we did the, uh, created a retirement plan as an incentive for that same very reason that we have a hard time having volunteers join the department. <coughs> Um, because there were no other incentives other than the joy of being a volunteer and, and do help your neighbors. 
Um, so those are a couple of quick comments. I, I do have others. I don't know when you're going to want me to say something. So. Well, well, let every, anyone else speak, and then we'll come back to Albi. On a legal issue, maybe? Yeah. Well, I, I don't know about the legal issue. Um, I wonder what is meant by a, what do you call this, uh, municipal. Does it mean that it's going to be a full-time paid fire department? I'm not the one to answer these. Who would have to see? Which, yeah, what is your goal? Okay. So right now, the Berlin Volunteer Fire Department is a private corporation. No, no, no. In, so all it will do, what we want to do is bring it into the fold of the town. We have the municipal police department. We have highway. We have um, the whole municipality. So They're that's what, all paid employees. It's going to be brought into that as a volunteer department at first, because this isn't a one swing cuts the tree down and we're all set. As Joe had said, the expansion rate of Berlin is outpacing our all volunteer fire department right now. So by bringing it in house, we can cut save some money because the the. Um, Town of Berlin already has treasurers. They already do payroll. They already do a lot of administrative duties. As Joe says, their volunteers are doing that now. So we bring that in house. That's what the municipal fire department will be, just like the police Did you department. Ever see hiring full-timers to, to run the equipment. And Down the that, road, that is eventually going to happen. I'm yeah. Torn Austin town administrator, by the way, and also select board member. That is probably inevitable, but it's going to happen whether it's a municipal department or still as a volunteer fire department. That, you know, I'm not going to say it's happened tomorrow. I'm not going to say it's going to be two years or ten years, but eventually that is going to have to happen. Well, I perceive a big difference in a volunteer department that has to attend the town's for money and the municipal fire service that the town is taking over and having to hire full-time employees for fire and possibly an ambulance. I mean, that's there's money we're throwing in a different organization. Well, well right now, service. right now, the town of Berlin outsources the ambulance to um, Barry City, Barry Town, Barry Town. So that it's still under our control. I mean, we get to vote on it in every three or five years. We renew that contract. Right. I, yeah. I don't mind. This is my point. Yeah. I don't mind no, I, I, voting on it or not. I've got to see a budget of some sort. Right. This is what the cost has Right. So what's happening nationwide? This is happening nationwide. You know, 50, 60 years ago, there was a lot of volunteer fire departments. There wasn't a big enough interest to have municipal fire departments. Now, because they're changing and um, I guess I'm not going to be very specific, but there's a wide variation of how these are changing. Some of them are municipal-owned volunteer fire department. Some of them are only a municipal-owned fire department. There's a lot of variation on how that can happen. If it's a municipal-owned department, it's much more advantageous when we apply for grants. And because this is such a big deal nationwide, there's a lot of federal money to help people make to help small towns make this transition from uh, an all-corporate, like the SAFER grants and the ACT grants. But we're not there yet. We're, we're not even close to that. We're just sort of putting this out there that, what, since 1954 or 56, it's been a volunteer <laughs> private corporation. And if you just drive around town, drive through the mall, it's just growing like crazy everywhere. You know, we got, um, they're going to add another five stories onto the hotel. Everybody says we're hiring, we're looking for help in the fire department, and everybody else is in the same boat. Volunteerism nationwide is waning. And like it or not, I mean, eventually, yes, yes, the fire department to survive is going to have to pay people. But we're sort of in the early stages of that right now. But you think that vote and not know 
put us in cost then? Well, they will know. In the town report, like we get when we put the budgets together, like you look at the town budget and it's four and a half million dollars. If you look at the town report, it breaks it down to what it costs. What was the police? What was highway? What was um, you know the treasure cost? It's all right in there. So this will be included in that. The, the cost will be included. So last year, the town passed a budget of about $426,000 for the fire department. It was passed by the town. It was Article 6. Article 2 was the town's budget at $4.5 million. So if this were to pass, you would see those combined. Just like right now, if you didn't look at the town report, you didn't know what the highway department paid, or you didn't know what the police department was paid, or didn't know what the town clerk's office was paid, until you look at that report. So it will be there. And moving forward, there will probably be more meetings like this, and there'll be more votes to either bring in some full-timers, or do you want to stay with a volunteer department? Uh, excuse me, a municipally owned volunteer for top, uh, department, not a corporate owned department. Sir? So, my name is Matthew Romeo, I'm the deputy fire <coughs> chief for the volunteer fire department. And this may help, by way of perspective, it may help with the understanding of it. There are currently two fire departments within Washington County that are not municipal fire departments. That's us and East Montpelier. Every other department has and some of them have been there for a long time. Some of them have made the transition recently from a corporate structure to a town structure. It doesn't change the vote that's coming next, almost next month, next month from tomorrow, doesn't change anything except actually provide more transparency to the residents of the town. I'm also a town resident from ground off the Chandler Road. When you look at that town report from last year, you would see an article with the fire department budget as a lump sum. But when you turn back to the back of the, or the middle of the town report, you get a very detailed report of all the town departments, where you get a single number for us. Now, out of an abundance of transparency, we've presented our budget, now you may know, it's, it's been years and years and years and years that we've come and presented our budget to the select board in the open meeting. Right. So there's not anything that's hidden amongst it. It's just you're now going to get visibility on it, you know, right there in the you would get that oh, visibility yeah, on it right there. I also will tell you that the, the the decision to hire staff or to do staffing or anything of that 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 is not at issue in November. That is, not an issue. Right. that is not an issue in November. That right. is not on the ballot. Right. No. It is strictly an issue of are we going to continue in this corporate structure with a, quite frankly, a lot of duplication, or are we going to bring this in under as a town department? And, you know, like people were saying, following a lot of other departments. This wasn't, um, this isn't a road that we're that we're hoeing out of a out of a trail. We've at least got a class four road we can follow um, in the process. Someone else? Sir. Comments or questions? Sir? Can the current town administrative the one that's handle the increase work that's gonna be created by adopting the volunteer fire department? Or is that gonna require additional help? I'm Flo Smith and I'm on the select board also and I believe that it will come with efficiencies that will actually be a savings and to answer your point Chris, uh, definitely the, there's staff on board that has the skill set, it just needs to be integrated if this does pass, but I do think it will come with efficiencies and cost savings. So, so they have the, the capacity within their permit schedule to handle the, the increase the work time, well, that's my belief, yes. Someone else? Sir. I'm Bob Sagan. What's happening in the background is the 
years ago, Alan was a past member of the Bureau of Fire, but we had no, we had no automatic alarms. We had fire calls. That's it. Today, we've got all of these fire alarms. Joe can attest to how many people are getting up at three o'clock in the morning now and responding to these when they're happen most every day. Manpower is a real problem. The people that are out on board there now are committed to do other jobs. Station maintenance, all of the book work that has to be done. They came to be volunteer firefighters and EMS people. And as soon as they walk in the door, you find out they have got to get all of, all of this training from Iowa, State of Vermont, and Ted's, which we didn't used to have to deal with. And these other jobs are put on to them. They fade. How many job, how many real active firefighters do we have right now if that tone goes off? Then you can depend on. Well, I can tell you the responder, um, the roster is somewhere around 16. And when anyone ever talks about their roster, I can tell you 50% is worth something. And the ones you can really count on is another half of that. So Shrink, yeah. we're, we're talking five people <clears throat> is what you got at best in the middle of the night. Might even be only three. We all had time. Yeah, we did, I did, you did. Nobody responds. Right. Then we got to call the neighbors. And, that's not and this is nationwide. This isn't just here. Correct, correct. It's, it's, I just it's, want to let people know here, I think most of them do know that, that it's, the, it's coming in the entry level. We're, we're getting very few people. Someone else? So, oh, so as you look at this transition from the volunteer department to uh, the municipal department, has it been developed anything, a list, so to speak, of exactly what duties would fall under the municipality, those duties that will re relieve the volunteers from doing those duties so that the incentive then is there to bring more volunteers in because they're there, they've got to train, They've got to go to fire school. They've got to get firefighter one, et cetera. They've got to do the truck training. Talk about nothing about specialty training, whether it be for the airport or an aircraft, whether it be for confined space, high angle, ice rescue, all those other specialty trainings that go on aren't included in that firefighter one basic. So there's plenty to do just as a volunteer to be prepared to do all the types of calls that come in these days with the way cities grow, with the interstate, the railroad junction, the airport, the hospital, all these things that we now have in our town. So I guess from my perspective, my biggest concern is a clear-cut listing of what transfers to the town that they will manage to remove that workload off the volunteers so that the chief, the guys that are members can recruit and work on training and response. And we know that daytime calls are always tough because everybody's got a job. And unless you got a job that lets you, all right, get out of here, your pager went off, you're going to be cut down to three or two to respond. Thank God for mutual air aid. So I guess my big question is, has that defined list come out? And I'm talking about everything from, Joe, I don't know how much money you, you raise these days in fundraisers, but I do know that for a long time we received money in kind from like the air, uh, from uh, the hospital and Blue Cross Blue Shield and, and others that help 
offset that budget of the town. I mean, at one time we were we were raising a third of the budget that funded the fire department was raised through the volunteers. But guess what? That was another impact on the volunteers. Again, is the town situated to absorb those type of things or at least make up for those type of things so it removes that burden from the from the fire department? Speaking from the town's perspective, yes, we do have that list. Uh, I mean, it is quite an extensive list, as, as you can well imagine. Right. Another thing this will allow us to do is maybe 10 years ago, we implemented a uh, alarm ordinance. Um, wasn't necessarily well written, uh, you know, to allow to be able to charge for repeated false alarms. Um, but I know there's also uh, ability to expand that, you know, refine that being under municipal department, expand, uh, refine that and expand it into other types of calls. Uh, we can take advantage of, you know, these insurance payments and stuff like that. That's not, you know, that's outside of the realm the fire department can do now with all their, their administrative duties. Oh yeah, that, that's been happening. I mean, during our tenure, uh, we started cha charging for hazmat calls. Mm -hmm. We started charging for non-resident fire calls, you know, uh, vehicle fires on the interstate. Somebody from Connecticut driving through. Mm -hmm. Many times we would be paid for those fire right. calls. Right. There was an effort at one time, I had left by that time, to standardize throughout the capital fire mutual aid system so that we were all charging the same thing. So that if Burnland went to Williamstown on the interstate and Williamstown was charging, we would charge the same thing. So it wouldn't cause problems with the insurance companies. Bottom line, again, I'm glad to hear that you got the list going and that you're working on that kind of stuff. But that's one of the impacts that the town's got to realize is going to happen to the town, to the municipality. I think some pers one of the biggest things from the fire department standpoint is we gain 12 days a year immediately because we no longer have to have a business meeting once a month to conduct the business of the department as a corporation. We gain those 12 days back immediately and apply them to training and all those things that you just listed out. Pete? So um, I'm on the steering committee. I'm not a member of the fire department. <laughs> I've lived in town for about 43 years. And believe me, I have really had my eyes opened as to what goes on. You guys are just the fire department, just like everybody else's. So I think I may represent people that don't know what's going on up there, which is the majority of the lenders. And um, the amount of work you have to put in to just maintain currency, the hours, the fact that employers are not as apt to allow people to leave anymore, it's just getting more and more difficult. So I guess from a civilian, my point of view is that as a municipality, we will be better equipped, I think, to implement a lot of what you're talking about because it's the town, it's the select board. It's not a private corporation deciding something, which was fine back in the day, but it's just getting harder and harder. And Matt and all these guys have told me about new rules, new regulations, so much more than it used to be that without getting into the details, just personally, I couldn't answer those questions. I don't know enough about it. But just overall, the town has, I believe, more ability to take this fire department into the future to serve Berlin's needs better than a all-volunteer <coughs> private corporation. I still have this yeah, I realize I just wanted to make sure everyone else had a chance to talk oh, before you okay. do it again, but it looks like it's your turn now. Go for it. Go. Oh, I'm on. <laughs> yeah. If the fire department becomes a municipal fire service that comes under the auspices of the town of Berlin select board, I would mm -hmm. guess, right? Um, does that mean once it's turned over to the select board, they have the, oh, I guess authority 
to spend monies, do what needs to be done in the fire department after meeting with some of the folks that are senior folks on the fire department. Uh, how does that work? So maybe maybe it would be good to answer that in terms of how we do with the police Matt, department. Right. Now. So what, you want to do it? You're ahead. Okay. So, you know, it's budget time is coming now in each department. And as Matt has said, the fire department isn't even as a volunteer department submits and presents their budget to the town and to the select board. So doesn't the fire, uh, the police, so doesn't the highway, you know, how much does gravel cost, right? We got a bid on gravel, bid on salt, all of that. And those meetings are public meetings that anybody can come to that nobody comes to, <laughs> you know, but they are there. You can participate in them. So as uh, Matt was saying, there's more transparency. I think it's going to be not that it's closed, it's just a private corporation. I mean, even though the corporation does present their budget to us, you can sit there and listen to that. But um, so when I was on the board, we hired a police officer. And we got some money because they put the psychiatric ward up there, so we're on a pilot program that helps to pay for that officer. All that's public information. Oh, well, I know that. Yeah. I mean, but I mean, so it isn't going to be the select board sits around and says, let's hire five people. If, you know, not, I'm sort of getting off topic here, but yeah. as a municipality, you get access to a lot of federal grants. And we don't know what those are. You really can't explore what money is available if you, if you can't, if you're not a municipal. Um, grant. You have to run the, the department as if there were no grants, because before there weren't, there is now, who knows, later there may not be. Right. I'm just suggesting is the town will end up taking over the, ser the fire service and it will finance the fire service like it does all the other <laughs> entities. And I see our taxes going up. Yeah. There's no doubt about it. Well, that budget will be brought by the chief, by the fire department. Like the police department, as Paul says, it's a municipality. They come and present their budget to the select board. Yeah. Yeah. But that's my point is the fire service will be part of the town Budget. Board type thing that they will fix the monies that go well, to well, and stuff like that. Well, the, the fire department brings the budget to the select board now as a private corporation. And then the select board puts it on the ballot. I know, but the fire department is, is easing back from making any money or trying to make any money, and it's going to all depend on the taxpayers and the town of Berlin. Well, what to did keep you make? the fire service up and running. Joe? Yes. So I'm going to say, um, looking at the last few years, it was probably anywhere between uh, 88 to 92 percent of the budget is taxpayers' money, you know, depending on the year. Right. But I'm going back many years and, and just to, to encompass that. Um, is it is it going to be 100 percent? Well, it's we're going to be picking up another 8 percent. Anyway, will there be some fundraising? I, I think uh, the, the talk is there's going to be a support entity being the, the friends of the fire department, whatever that might be, that might be doing some fundraising and support of its members, whatever that might be. You know, we, we, have, we have a scholarship program. Don't necessarily think that the town's going to maybe approve the increase of a scholarship program, which goes to either a member or a family member um, of the fire department um, and whatever else that that entity might believe needs to support the members. Um, if you're talking about equipment and such as that, it would come out of the budget from the town. Um, Anybody else comments? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I have a question on if you're taking administrative duties away from your firefighters, your yeah. volunteer firefighters, mm -hmm. is that going to, I don't know, make them happier campers so that they'll become better? Oh, 
Really? Tell us how you feel. Yeah. Well. Um, so, I mean, you think they're going to make them happier and they'll be better fire fighters and more likely to come to the scene or to the station? Well, I don't necessarily think, can I answer? <laughs> yeah. I don't necessarily think somebody's going to walk in the door to a fire department and say, you know, I want to. I want to be your admin person. I've actually seen one person do that. I will say I've seen one person do that. But just last year alone, we had over 1,600 hours of admin hours, okay, versus over 600 hours of maintenance to buildings and trucks, to hardly 100 hours of training. People want to be a firefighter. They want to be pulling the hose and throwing the ladders, and they want to do that. We need them to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. But it's really been lopsided for way too long. Oh. I lost a few thought. This isn't uh, intended to be committee meetings for the spectator. And uh, this isn't going to happen overnight. There's a lot of steps and a lot of answers that we probably cannot answer tonight. I mean, we have a retirement program. What's going to happen to that? You know, program. We don't know. So this vote is not going to change day to night. It's going to take a period of time to work these individual problems out on a one-to-one -one basis. And, and Albie, to answer your question earlier, I think both attorneys have kind of worked on this a little bit. It's not a cold mm -hmm. shot in the dark. Mm -hmm. We've been advised right. on what we're going to have to do and, right. Right. and the path to take. It's not right. just Town us. Attorney, department attorney. Mm -hmm. yes, one thing we did see, because I sat on, the, on the, the steering committee as well, and one thing we did see uh, when we heard from multiple departments that have done this, mm -hmm. we did just... And I was just kind of hacking their own way. We got all of them in, said, tell us what worked, tell us what didn't. And one of the things that was consistent across the board was the thought that we don't know the questions to ask yet until we get into the process. You almost have to build the airplane while you're trying to fly. And it's a horrible thought process, but you don't know all the questions to ask until you get into the process. And I think part of it has to be a little bit of faith in our elected officials. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> we have to have a little bit of faith in our elected officials to do the right thing as this process goes along. Um, and I, I mean, again, I, I go back to we get 12 more days to train here, all, right out the door. Um, you know, we, I, I know that, I know for a fact I didn't put in for a third of my hours last year that were devoted to making the department go. I, I guarantee you that's the case with these two guys. So I just think a lot of it, it will be a, a little bit of a, a little bit of a relief um, as we kind of go forward and we can get back to what we got in this business for. That's driving trucks and fighting fires. Sir, uh, I'd like to introduce myself. Ryan Barr, president of the corporation. Um, I had a football game to coach. Um, <laughs> I was running a little bit late. Um, I think burnout is, is one of the biggest goals of this. Um, Chief read, read the numbers already. It was 1,600 hours of recorded administrative work in, the la in 2023. Um, I know for a fact I did not play all my hours, uh, record all my hours, and I know Chief didn't either. Um, there are so many nights I'm spent at the firehouse doing paperwork, doing administrative stuff. You know, I would much, much rather be doing trainings, be doing um, anything else. Um, so I think one of the biggest goals that I personally have from this is might sound wrong, but to push the administrative on the town because they are trained professionals, they are accountants. We're not accountants. Um, they, they know treasury work. We don't. Um, 
we, I think, out of that 1,600, like, what, 500, 600 of that was treasury work, just reporting numbers and, and making sure we're paying the bills properly. Um, those types of things can easily be reduced, and instead of being duplicated, and we we pay an account accounting firm six, uh, almost seventeen thousand dollars last year to do our accounting. The town could take it on for a fraction of that. Um, I know plowing. We spent six thousand dollars plowing and salt um, and lawn cleanup last year. Uh, the town has plows, they have salt, they get a much better rate than we're paying for it. Um, those, those duplicative uh, payments are our goal. Are they're what we're hoping to reduce by doing this. Um, and insurance, we get better insurance rates, better interest rates, those, those kind of things. Um, and also access to, to federal money, and I know federal money is not always there, but it gives us a foot in the door instead of looking from the outside. Um, I know it's probably possible we could get a safer grant, but we have to jump through a dozen more hoops and spend hundreds of extra man hours to apply for a grant that isn't even guaranteed. Whereas if we were part of the town, we have a much higher chance of getting a grant, aka a safer grant. Um, Auburn, Vermont was the last one in, in Vermont to get it. They got 55,000 just for recruiting. Um, Maine, 2022, uh, uh, a, a town in Maine, similar population, got 1.6 or 1.15 million for hiring firefighters. Um, we're not ruling hiring out, um, but that's not the goal of this. If that comes in the future, and the town eventually finds the need to hire based on the call volume, then the town can take that. Um, probably much more efficiently than we can. Um, if this doesn't pass and we remain a private corporation, and we find the need to hire firefighters, we're gonna have to figure out how to do it. Um, I, think, I think that's it. I think that's it. Okay, anybody else? Questions, comments? Anything else? So, oh. I wanted to add that I think it's wonderful that we're having this tonight, and I think the more questions, the better, and this is one of two sessions. We'll have another one up at the Four Corners. Um, I'll let you folks say the date. But basically, we have a very devoted fire department. The folks are doing so much with so little, and it's impressive. And we have a very caring community, October. and humbly said, a diligent select board. So I think we're very poised to have a positive outcome if this becomes um, I'll pick back off of that. Um, let's give a round of applause to our current and past uh, firefighters. They did a great job. Let me stand them up. There we go. Good job. Thank you so just apologize for for waiting until the very end my name is janet richardson i am a town resident i am the chair of the steering committee i am also a lieutenant on the department um and you know there's there's been a lot of great points and questions here. Um, I, I would like to go back to which I think, you know, Ryan and, and others have somewhat touched on this. It, part of your question was, you know, are we just going to, once the, if the department becomes municipal, you know, are they going to just go and hire full-time firefighters, right? Um, the, the, my hope, and, and I think a lot of the discussion that has happened in, 
in the steering committee meetings is that you know we, we have a good not large but a, a core group of firefighters that are you know very devoted to, to this town um, to protecting this town um, and and part of the hope is that um, those those folks you know would 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 you know go through a, a hiring process potentially with with the town um, and you know it's not like we're they would just be out potentially looking for you know to hire people off the street I, I think there are people within the department today um, you know as as well as um, you know your concern sounded to me like a concern um, about you know the, the select board and, and the budget and such um, as someone probably Matt pointed out you know the the steering committee did meet with several other departments who yes said you're not going to know all the answers to the questions um, or even know all the questions right um, but what what they stressed was that there's there's a collaboration there's there's good communication um, between the department and the town and those kind of things it's like we're you know trying to build that relationship so that you know we're we're doing the the department is you know being able to be firefighters like we want to be and you know not doing the administrative work but still having and, and you know building and maintaining that cohesive relationship with all of us if, if that helps at all <laughs> This is uh, the first of two public hearings. The second one will be on October 29th, beginning at 6.30 at the Four Corners Fire Station. And I believe the town, uh, the uh, election is on November 5th. Right. So, uh, thanks for coming out. Uh, this just something a, else? Uh, just a question. Um, talked a little bit about the areas that would move to the municipality versus those things that would stay. Do you think that would be shareable um, by that time? By the 5th? By, by, by the next or by the next meeting. meeting. Great. Thanks. Good. Sorry to interrupt. That's all right. Mm -hmm. uh, motion to adjourn? That's a little... Second? Second. That All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. It, no. <laughs>